The addition of halogens to alkenes occurs stereospecifically. This is a word we've seen before. It means that the stereochemistry of the reactant uniquely defines the stereochemistry of the product. How does that work when we're adding bromine to an alkene? Well, the stereochemistry of the reactant in this case is trans, and we obtain two products. But notice that both products have the same relative stereochemistry. In one case, the bromine is coming out and the other one's going back, and the second product has exactly the same relative stereochemistry. One bromine is going back and the other one is coming out. Now these two products are related as an enantiomeric pair, but the stereospecificity that we're referring to here means that the trans product gives the relative stereochemistry where one bromine is coming out and the other is going back. We'll figure out where the enantiomeric pair comes from a little bit later on. But first, let's look at the cis case. Addition of bromine again produces two products, but notice that these two products again have the same relative stereochemistry. In particular, both bromines are heading in the same direction, whether they be back or forward. Let's try to use the mechanism that we've established for the addition of halogens to an alkene to understand how it is that the trans produces the relative stereochemistry where one bromine is out and one is back, while the cis produces the relative stereochemistry where both bromines are heading in the same direction. Let's begin by analyzing the case for trans to pentene. So for trans to pentene, the bromonium ion intermediate is shown here. You can see that it's trans by the relationship of the methyl and the ethyl group. This might be easiest to see from a ChemTube 3D model. This particular model happens to be for trans to butene. You can see the relationship of the methyl groups and the addition of bromine coming in from the top. And so if we examine it down that direction, it's clear we're looking at the trans alkene with the bromine coming in from the top. Those curved arrows will generate this bromonium ion and that bromonium ion retains that trans geometry that was in the original alkene. What happens next is an SN2 reaction from the underside. The sigma star is being attacked by this nucleophilic bromine anion. And so the result is that there's an inversion of configuration at this carbon. The combination of bromonium ion formation, which retains the original alkene geometry, followed by SN2, an inversion of configuration, is what defines the stereospecificity of this reaction. The particular type of stereospecificity in this reaction is anti. It means that the two bromines add to opposite sides of what was the plane of the carbon-carbon double bond. You can see this when you examine the product. In the product, we can still find that original trans-alkene geometry embedded in this product, which now has sp3 centers. And so if we imagine that that used to be the plane of the double bond, it's clear that one bromine is above that plane and another is below that plane, meaning that we have anti-type addition. Now let's talk about how those enantiomers come about for the case of trans-2-pentene. Starting from the same bromonium ion, one way that the two enantiomers could be generated by having the nucleophile attack different carbon atoms. You can see with the incoming nucleophile colored blue that the two products that result from the different carbon attack are actually just mirror image relationships to one another. They're both anti-addition, but you generate mirror image products. That's just one way that you could form the enantiomers. A second way to do it, it's going to require you to work this through on your own, is to generate the bromonium ion intermediate, which the bromine is not above the plane, but it's on the opposite face. So if you had drawn the stereochemistry in which the bromonium ion was down, like this, but otherwise all the groups oriented in the same way, methyl group here, and ethyl group here, 
then you should be able to convince yourself that if the nucleophilic attack takes place at this atom, you would generate the enantiomer of this product. And that's a second way by which the enantiomers could form. The same method that we applied here to trans-2-pentene can also be applied to cis-2-pentene, and you should work through this on your own. There's also a ChemTube 3D model that you'll want to take a look at. What I want to conclude with is to show you that one of these products has exactly the same line angle drawing as that which I showed you at the very beginning of this webcast. So the atoms that are shown in green is the carbon atom backbone, and in the line angle drawing, we're going to draw the planar zigzag form. That is, we're going to put each of those atoms in green in the plane of the screen. The methyl group that's on the left-hand side appears to be coming out toward us, and so we need to put it in the plane of the screen for the proper line angle drawing. And to do that, we'll rotate the group on the left-hand side about the carbon-carbon bond and tilt that methyl group into the plane. When we do this, the bromine, which you can now see is in the plane, is going to tilt outward and come toward us. For the group that's on the right, we need to put the ethyl group in the plane of the screen, and so we're going to do that by rotating in the opposite direction about the carbon-carbon bond. When we tilt that ethyl group back, the bromine, which is on this atom here, is going to come out toward us. There's the ethyl group, the bromines are both heading toward us, and we have the line angle drawing that we saw at the beginning of the webcast. In this webcast, we saw that halogens add to alkenes by an anti-stereospecific process. In the next webcast, we'll track the stereochemistry of some addition reactions that go by non-stereospecific mechanisms.